Hello everybody! Let's talk about sexing your crusted geckos. No, it's nothing really dirty. Don't worry about it, I'm not being a perv, or too much of one. Um, we're just looking at how to tell if your gecko is a male or a female. Um, with the adults, it's really, really easy. So, we'll start with the adults just so you can see what's going on with these guys. This here is a female. She's a nice chubby female. She actually just laid eggs for me. So I'm 100% maybe 99% positive that this is a female. Anyway, we look at the female here and we see that underneath her vent area or her butt or whatever you want to call that, that hole on their bottom, it's really smooth. It's just a straight line straight across there. There's no bulge or anything going on. With this adult male, who would really, really like to play with that adult female, there's a noticeable bulge right under that tail. You can see that. Those are his hemipenes. Those are his boy parts. Crusted gecko males have two penis type organs and they keep them inside until they're copulating. So pretty gross, sort of interesting, whatever. But once you have an adult male, there's pretty much no way you can mistake it for a female. You can even see the bulge when you look at them from the top down. So yeah, that's, that's pretty big there. Also, the cool thing about male crusted geckos is that they have what's called pores on their underside. I'm going to take this little sheet of glass here. It's just like, it's part of a like picture frame, like a $2 picture frame that I got at the dollar store or whatever. Um, and I'm just using the glass as a kind of flat area to lay him down. And maybe he'll cooperate with me. Or maybe he won't because he's a gecko. But we can kind of take a look at this area here. And right along here is where we would be seeing the pores. It's a little bit difficult to make out without much zoom, but I will use um, captions or whatever it's called to point them out. Now, if you want to see these a little bit closer, all you have to do is buy yourself one of these jeweler's loops. This is a 10 times jeweler's loop, and I really like this kind because it fits right in your eye socket. You can just stick it right in there, and then you have a free hand, uh, an extra free hand to hold the gecko and move them around if you want. Um, but it just provides some magnification, and it allows you to see what the pores look like. Now, my camera is not going to work well with this pour or with this sexing loop. So what I'm going to do is take a couple pictures and let you see what the pour area looks like when it's zoomed in with a camera. And it's pretty much what you would see with the loop. Things get a little bit touchier um, when you're working with slightly smaller animals. These are two um, juvenile crested geckos. One's a male, one's a female, and they're both tailless. Don't worry about them not having any tails. Every time I take a video of a gecko with no tail, people freak. 
it's all right. They lose their tails sometimes. Both of these came to me without tails. It happens, crusted geckos, it's part of owning them. Get over it. It happens, they don't grow back with this species. Um, we're gonna take a look at the female. Whoop. She goes rolling. Um, once again, it's very flat underneath. There's nothing special going on there. No lumps, no bumps. And this is about the size where they do stop, start dropping the little bulge area. So with this male, we can actually start seeing the bulge if we know what we're looking for. You can see looking top down, it's a little bit of a bulge going on. And this guy is actually growing at a very rapid pace because I meant to do this video a couple days ago, didn't have time, and the bulge was not as pronounced, but now it's really getting there. Both these, both of these geckos are within um, like a gram of each other. One's 13, one's 13.9, I think. So yeah, you'll start seeing this little bulge growing. And once again, at this size, pores are very easy to spot on a male. So I'll take a couple more pictures for you so you can see what they look like compared to the female. And that's all well and good, you say. But what about the little geckos? That's when I care the most about whether it's a male or a female, right? I want to know whether I should be selling off my geckos or, you know, keeping one back because it's female or male, whatever I need. That's when it does get a little bit trickier. I've started um, being able to see pores on geckos when they're about four grams or so, but that doesn't... Um, stand true in every case. Sometimes they're a lot easier to see on some geckos because the gecko might have um, a very like non-patterned belly and that makes pores easier to see. When you're looking at a gecko with a lot of pattern on its belly sometimes it can be really easy to miss pores if they're there. But anyway I'm gonna take a look at this gecko here. It's a very small gecko. But we're gonna take a look. In the naked eye, it's really hard to see what's going on. But if we take a couple pictures, we might be able to see, or if we look with our loop, we might be able to see something. And sure enough, that gecko does look like it's developing pores. So I would list that one as a probable male if I were going to sell it. This is another gecko. Still very small. And we'll take a look at it with the loop. And I'll show you a picture 
using my macro lens. So with this gecko, it appears that it doesn't have pores that are visible at this point. However, this gecko is still really small, um, and I would probably only list it as a possible female. Um, I try to be as accurate and err on the side of caution as possible for my customers, because I know I would feel pretty crappy if I bought a gecko that was supposed to be a male and it turned out to be female or if I bought something that I wanted a female and they were like oh yeah sure no it's female I looped it don't worry about it and it turned out to be male um, so I'll what I do is I give customers pictures as close as possible to the area but I don't think it's wise to make guarantees until you start seeing for sure pores dropping or um, they get to about usually about 20 grams you're gonna know like what sex it is but um, just if you're selling crested geckos just be honest with your customers um, if you're looking for a specific sex of gecko um, ask the seller you know are you guaranteeing the sex about it you know are you for sure telling me this is a male or a female and get it in writing um, because it can be really really tricky when you're working with geckos this small. Um, this one is not showing pores right now but there's a possibility in the future that it could they could become more visible if they're not visible now. Um, so just have a lot of integrity when you're sexing your geckos if you're trying to sell them. All right. That's about it.